I've noticed that uh, one of my packs gets uh, a lot lower than the others right near the end and it's on this pack, uh, this battery on the wall here but it's the seventh one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's this one um, and so um, what I need to do is boost this pack up a little bit uh, and so I'm going to do that in the same way as I have for these packs on the wall here so when I built these ones, I added these little four cell holders so that I can put some extra cells in to boost them up. So what I need to do is to take this pack uh, off the wall um, and solder a couple of uh, those uh, four cell holders on there uh, and then put it back in service and put some extra cells in there to, to boost that one up. Um, so the first thing I need to do is to uh, pull the fuse for this pack to disconnect this pack from from the rest of them um, And it's fine for me to, to do that. They're not under any load at the moment um, And there's enough other batteries in here to to keep the inverter running while I just quickly uh, make this fix so uh, I'll pull the fuse and then get this pack out of commission Put the new things on it and then get it back in again um, I did notice that also one of the others was not as bad but getting lower than, than the rest of them and that's the very last one, this one. So um, I might uh, I might also do the same for that one while I've, while I've got it out of commission so uh, I might do that. But um, I'll show a little picture of the, uh, of the battery cell voltages here uh, that I took a, a screenshot of when they were at their lowest. Uh, and you can see how that pack is so much lower than all the others. So let me get onto that. on nice and tight so now I just need to solder the tabs with some fuse wire onto the bus bar
Right. Now we just need the uh, big soldering iron to get enough heat to uh, fix them to the bus bar. So we've just got to wait for it to heat up. Lastly, we'll just check with the meter. We should have voltage between each of the Let's get this back into service. Okay. Put the fuse back in. Is it reconnected? So now I need to just put a couple of high capacity cells in there. Let's have a look what I've got. Two six, a two six, a two seven, and a two six. So let's put those in. Making sure to get them the right way around, otherwise I'll blow the fuses that I've literally just spent ages doing. So this side is negative, this side is positive, positive. Positive, positive, positive. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Okay, that was that, and uh, I'll hopefully do a follow up video um, next time the batteries get really low to show how much of a difference uh, that made. So, the other thing I've been doing is uh, I've been looking at some new uh, smart plugs to uh, add to my home automation setup. Now I usually use uh, either these uh, Energini uh, 005 energy monitor plugs um, which uh, work via their own sort of uh, wireless communication protocol directly with the Raspberry Pi 
or I have used these uh, TP-Link uh, smart energy plugs uh, as well and they work on your home Wi-Fi network so um, they can be uh, a little bit better when um, the plugs need to be a bit further away from the um, from the controller. The trouble is those um, those plugs uh, have a new firmware now. If you buy if you buy them in shops now, they have a newer version of the firmware in them, and you can no longer um, talk to them directly. Uh, they've they've all encrypted it and stuff and changed it, so you, I can't interface with those anymore. So the ones I've got are the only ones I've got, and I've been looking to get hold of some more uh, smart plugs that can be used on the Wi-Fi network in the house. Um, but that have some sort of open source firmware that I can directly communicate with. Uh, and I came across uh, this software called, uh, or this firmware called Tasmota. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but um, so this is sort of a, an open source firmware that has been um, developed for all sorts of uh, home automation devices. And I managed to find some uh, smart plugs. Um, from AliExpress that ha come with this software preloaded, so you don't even have to flash it on there yourself. Uh, so I've ordered four of those, and I'm just waiting for those to arrive. And when they do, I'll do a uh, video about those and uh, whether or not I can use them the way I want to use them, uh, and uh, how good that software is. Um, I've also got a small um, uh, device which I've got inside the switch to control my decking lights and apparently that is also compatible with this uh, Tasmota firmware uh, but I'll have to flash that one myself so I'll probably do a video about me um, upgrading that so that I can then control uh, my decking lights directly from my uh, home automation software Monocle because um, uh, at the moment I have to just use it via my phone uh, because again, I can't talk to the module directly. So yeah, that will be coming up uh, soon. What else have I been doing? Oh yes, so I've also been uh, working on uh, Monocle, my uh, automation software, to try and integrate it with um, the Octopus Agile tariff. Now, for those people not in the UK, this probably won't make uh, much sense to you, but um, for those of my viewers in the UK, you'll maybe know who Octopus are. Octopus Energy, they are um, uh, an electricity provider, and um, they have uh, a couple of very interesting um, tariffs that they provide. Um, one of them is called Octopus Go, which is the tariff that I'm currently on, uh, and what that gives you is um, uh, a set rate throughout the day, but between uh, twelve thirty, you know, you know, midnight, half past midnight, and four thirty in the morning, you get a, a very cheap rate of about five pence a kilowatt hour. Um, and I use that to, particularly in the winter, to charge my house batteries up, to charge the cars, to heat the hot water, all those sort of things, so that um, uh, I don't have to pay sort of daytime rates. Um, and that's Octopus Go and that's what I'm on at the moment um, but they've got another tariff called Octopus Agile and what Octopus Agile does is it gives you um, 24 hours in advance the price, the half hourly price, uh, wholesale price of um, electricity for the next 24 hours. So what you can do is you can look at the half hourly price and you can say okay between uh, I don't know 2 and 3 um, the price is going to be you know, five pence, so that's really cheap. So I'm going to use electricity between those times, uh, and then between six and seven, maybe it's 35 pence, and that's really expensive. And so you don't want to use electricity during those times. Um, now I'm not currently on Agile, like I say, but I've been keeping an eye on it, and I thought it'd be nice if I could modify my Monocle software to be able to work with Agile, so that it could take into account um, the uh, current price if I was on Agile and use that 
uh, within my monocle system to be able to switch things um, on and off for example so if the price went to just a penny a kilowatt hour for example I could say well switch on the hot water to heat up switch on the cars to charge charge up the batteries whatever you know um, and that would potentially be a useful feature to have so I have um, written a new service for uh, Monocle and what this does is it uh, queries the um, Octopus Energy Agile Tariff download it pulls it in uh, and then it um, talks uh, t to the main Monocle software over MQTT to tell it what the current price is at the moment uh, and then uh, I modified Monocle to uh, take those data readings of the current price uh, and allow it to make decisions based on uh, what that price is. Uh, and in order to test that, because obviously I'm not actually on Agile at the moment, what I did was I mocked up a download service for um, Octopus Go um, that gives you the same price data uh, or gives you the Octopus Go price data in the same format as the Agile data so that my uh, pricing service can uh, read the file in the same way as it would the Agile file, parse it and, and obviously just push out that the current price is always the same except between uh, half past midnight and half past four where it drops to five pence. Um, and then I could test that um, if I say for example uh, switch the hot water on to heat when the uh, price of uh, electricity is five pence a kilowatt hour or less uh, then I could test that it actually worked and sure enough when uh, half past midnight came and the price dropped to five pence um, it switched on the hot water um, and from that I could see that it's working so uh, yeah that was an interesting little addition um, I will be keeping an eye on Octopus Agile at the moment it doesn't make sense for me to go on it the um, pricing is just too high at the moment I think we're not getting that much wind and the price of wholesale gas is, is very high at the moment and that has a knock-on effect on the wholesale price of electricity and so at the moment the, the price of Agile is typically up in the 30 pence a, a kilowatt hour which is just way too high uh, but I will keep an eye on it and um, at some point in the future p potentially if the wholesale prices come back down again I might I might swap over onto Octopus Agile uh, and uh, give it a try but uh, yeah so anyone who maybe is interested in either of these tariffs uh, who's not with Octopus uh, at the moment um, Octopus uh, Energy are a really good energy provider they're which recommended they've got fantastic customer service um, and uh, really great uh, if you consider swapping to Octopus uh, for your energy supply please do use my referral link um, I'll leave a, a link to it up on the bottom of the screen here and then I'll leave another one at the end and also in the description um, if you use that link and you and you join Octopus um, we'll both get 50 pounds credited to our accounts uh, and um, and uh, yeah, that all helps me out and uh, helps you out, so it's a good thing. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much all I've got to talk about for this video. Um, I did have some footage that I, or at least some pictures and things that I took when I went to the fully charged outside event here in Farnborough in the UK. Um, I'll probably put a video of some of that together um, very soon so keep an eye out for that but uh, otherwise thank you for watching please like comment share subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next video Cheers.